Nadszedł czas zmiany, przejścia do prawdziwego działania Wszechświata. I nadszedł czas, aby zrozumieć, że używamy stanu materii, by osiągnąć poziom zrozumienia duszy człowieka. Teraz rozumiesz, być może, dlaczego Kreator wysłał swoich posłańców w imię tego, co miałeś. To oni przynoszą uszy, aby można było ich użyć, gdy nadejdzie czas Mesjasza. Mogę nauczyć duszę i przesłanie. Nie by się przeciwstawiać, ale poprzez ich zrozumienie przez tych, którzy stali się Mesjaszami, aby dawać ze swoich dusz, aby ich elewować. Zadanie stało się łatwe. Szkoła jest tutaj i uczniowie są tutaj w oddaniu. Wtedy nie będzie żadnej walki między tym, co nazywają muzułmanami a chrześcijanami. Baranek i lew będą jeść i spać w tym samym gnieździe. Chrześcijanie i muzułmanie będą spać i modlić się w meczecie, w tym samym kościele, w imię ich dusz, nie w imię religii, które są używane do tworzenia tak wielu konfliktów, dla korzyści tych, którzy byli hiperaktywnymi dziećmi. Nadszedł czas. Czas zmian jest tutaj. I jak powiedziałem, moje życzenie jest moim rozkazem. Jeśli pragniesz ujrzeć pokój, droga pokoju jest wyłożona bardzo wyraźnie. To dusza świadomości zbiorowej. Poprzez dawanie stworzy tą pozycję zmiany. Nic innego. W duszy człowieka nie ma długopisu. Jestem pewien, że po wejściu do społeczności uniwersalnej nigdy nie zobaczysz niczego zapisanego, ale równowagę pól duszy egzystencji. Staraj się być na tyle pokornym, aby nie stać się aroganckim w mocy, którą zrozumiałeś i posiadłeś. Inaczej wpadniesz w tą samą ścieżkę kościoła i meczetu. To jest to, co obiecaliśmy i to właśnie dostarczyliśmy. Musimy zrozumieć działanie duszy. I musimy zrozumieć, że dusza człowieka jest gwiazdą w kosmosie Wszechświata. Jeśli porównamy duszę człowieka i tak wielu nas, 7 miliardów w jednym zbiorze, Ziemia jest jak galaktyka z tak wieloma gwiazdami. Kiedy patrzymy w głąb Wszechświata, widzimy galaktyki z setkami milionów gwiazd. Podobnie jest z planetą Ziemią. Niesie 7 miliardów pięknych gwiazd, które są duszą człowieka. Niesie z sobą duszę tak wielu trylionów zwierząt, roślin i wszystkiego innego. Jeśli więc patrzą ci, którzy nie widzą fizyczności Ziemi i jej zawartości, co widzą? Widzą galaktykę z wielką ilością pięknych świecących świateł. Każda według swojej siły. Każda zgodnie ze swoją pozycją. Niemowlę ma piękną duszę, podobnie jak staruszek. Dla tych niefizycznych, którzy nie widzą fizycznego wymiaru tej planety, ale widzą siłę pola, jesteśmy gromadami gwiazd. Ludzka rasa, każda pojedyncza dusza, nikt z daleka nie widzi. To jest dusza rybaka, to jest dusza kosmologa, to jest dusza prezydenta. 
Wszystkie świecą bez względu na fizyczność. To jest magia. O to, co nowa nauka musi przynieść człowiekowi. Kiedy patrzymy przez naszą duszę, widzimy tylko gwiazdy w innych duszach. I to jest przełom. To jest zrozumienie. Na tym właśnie polegają te wszystkie nauki. Dojście do dojrzałości następnego poziomu, aby zrozumieć daleki kosmos. Wszechświat jest ostrygą dla tych dusz, które służą. Wtedy człowiek jest gotowy do wejścia w kosmos. Wtedy człowiek jest gotowy, aby stać się częścią uniwersalnej społeczności, która została obiecana. Nigdy nie obiecywałem wam nieba. Zawsze obiecywałem wam elewację człowieka, aby przyłączył się do rodziny. A teraz macie klucz. To wy musicie otworzyć drzwi, aby zrozumieć, że mogę elewować duszę tych ludzi lub milionów innych dusz, że fizyczne życie na tej planecie zmieni się. Wtedy jestem godny bycia częścią społeczności uniwersalnej, by być, aby służyć, aby się rozwijać, by być tam, aby być częścią, że w cyklu życia wszechświata staje się w byciu częścią, staje się częścią totalności. Kiedy człowiek osiągnie ten punkt, pojawi się nowy wymiar w sile duszy człowieka, który jest poza wyobrażeniem zrozumienia życia fizycznego. To jest brama do otwarcia nowego życia w nowym wymiarze, co jest poza wyobrażeniem tego, co mogliście nazwać nowym początkiem, nowym cyklem, gdzie ten cykl niesie ze sobą źródło stworzenia życia we Wszechświecie i Unikosie. To jest elewacja duszy, aby służyć. Stała się kluczem. Nie trą życia fizycznego. Czas jest odpowiedni. Nadszedł czas, aby człowiek przeszedł przez ten proces. Witamy wszystkich na 421 pierwszych warsztatach poszukiwaczy wiedzy w języku polskim. Dzisiaj mamy niedzielę, 6 grudnia 2020 roku. A na dzisiejszy dzień tematem jest kontynuacja 356 warsztatu poszukiwaczy wiedzy. I fragmenty na dzisiaj przetłumaczone to jest od godziny 49 do godziny 56 od 2 godzin 4 do 2.41, od 2.47 do 2.54, od 3.28 do 3.35 i ostatni fragment od 3 godzin 39 minut do 3 godzin 54 minut 50 sekund. Po warsztacie zapraszam do rozmów, zadawania pytań, na które postaramy się odpowiedzieć. Tak więc jak co tydzień po warsztacie możemy sobie porozmawiać. Tak więc zapraszam do wysłuchania, obejrzenia i zobaczymy co nam ten warsztat przyniesie dalej. Tak więc słuchamy.
in a way, in a way, in a solar system, you <coughs> need the center of the sun to be in the center. This technology, what you see, if it could be understood, is one step even further than that. Where we don't have a solar system. It's very much like the soul of the Creator, does not need tangible existence. This is the beauty of it. And I'm most probably, um, none of you have understood it up to now. This, what is on the table, what you see, is much more advanced than the solar system. Because there is no physical, tangible center. Then to create such a thing, needs a vast amount of knowledge and understanding. So, what is there in a simple way, is far beyond the present knowledge. But, we put it in there that in the future, scientists understand, it's already been shown. In the solar system, you need the sun to keep the central gravity. In this system, we don't have such a thing. We create a true dimension of the gravitational magnetic field of the environment, which is very much, much further than the present knowledge, but is there for future references. You don't need a physical structure like a sun to keep the operation of the ball, the earth. So, in a way, if you look at it, the movement of the ball in the non-tangible center, it's very much like the soul of the man in the center and the movement of the, the ball is the physicality of the man. This is the knowledge that in the coming weeks I will open up, you understand? Thank you, Mr. Kesh. I have a big smile on my face. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Would you carry on? I was just going to say, Ed asks, so where is the soul of this system? It's in the space gap in between. The, the development of this technology to be shown will have more additions, and then you will see. Up to now, you always relied on something to turn something. Now we rely on the field forces of the universe to do the same. And gradually we, we show this as in a very independent um, system that uh, will change a lot of things in understanding. My, my um, biggest wish and one of the jobs I'll be heading for to complete in China and Iran in coming weeks, is the development of the satellites through the system. Which means, with it we can feed, and with it bring the new communication systems in the new computers, because the creation of the new uh, memory banks through the soul of the system, will become the fundamental part of this technology, to remember where this ball stood. We don't have, what is rotating in this ball, we don't have enough computers to add this data into it. Or if you put all the computers we have on this planet, will not be able to analyze how even this simple system works. 
this forces us into development and delivery of new computers, new, what I call, intelligent system with a soul which can respond and keep position. And this, uh, these new, what I call, what we call it, computers and control systems, will be brought out very rapidly in the next few weeks, because to be able to create the condition to keep satellites in position, is part of this technology. We have to, otherwise we won't be able to control and keep position. At the moment, we create and uh, have systems which are kept by motors or whatever into gravitational positioning of our satellites and how they move around it. And with this new system, we embed it in the soul of the system, with the intelligence and knowledge. The new cycle of what you call computers and communication system, will make the present satellites and what we call computers and communication lines absolutely obsolete. And I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, the scientists at uh, organizations like Huawei uh, and others will get the opportunity to do this first. I love to work with Huawei, and on my trip to China, Huawei will be one of the cornerstones of our work in developing the real technology in conjunction with the Iranian scientists. Okay, I know we need to take a break here, Mr. Cash. I think I'd like to read the comment from Ed in the Q&A, which goes along with what you were just saying. He says, the irregularity of the motion of the ball is so different from the animations or representations of universal motion we have been, uh, seen given to us by the present knowledge. It reminds me of a living being, like seeing a video of the insides of the human body. Is this how we will see the universe in the future as a living being? Well, that is how we see it. It is, we never considered it. Um, how do you put it? Look here. Uh, it's previous question. He had asked, where is the soul of the system? And you had talked about that. And so Ed says, so, so in a sense, the soul is in the environment. In a way, yes. And Diane goes on to the next question and says, in, in my metaphysical understanding, I have learned everything orbits something. If that is so, what does this new system orbit? And you've already answered that in a way, I think, when you mentioned uh, about the solar system and we have the sun in the center, but this system doesn't have a central sun but it does rotate according to the universal um, fields that are in effect there. Maybe you could explain that a little better? Um, if you were an old hand in nuclear technology and science, um, as I've said many times, we see the motion of the electron and we get the conformation of the proton and neutron. In so many ways, what we see inside as an electron neutron is the interaction of their fields together, which gives us an idea there is something inside. It's a very old structure, 
And in a way, by existence of the light inside, when we become more mature, we see that this ball which is rotating is like that electron. And with this conformation of the rotation, regularity of rotation, it shows a consistent mono field strength. Where you have the rapid changes in the position of the electron, when we look at it under the tools available to us, we don't see it circling in a circular way is irrational and is very much uh, unpredictable, as Einstein said. The, the, the predictability of the next spot for the electron rotating around the nucleus depends on the field interaction within the neutron and proton, or in the case of hydrogen, in the field strength of the proton with the fields of the neutron, which is then get affected by the two. And we see in this system, we can control the, the speed of the rotation. We can control the speed of the rotation around the circle. And we can give it continuity in the same position. In a way, we have taken the unpredictability out of it. And this understanding, creating now the next step, plasma fields without the physicality, which is the next step of development, in creating um, atmospheric condition of fields that creates this new condition. Which means the next step, we don't need the ball. In the next stage of development, we create the fields that will show the rotation of the water without any bolt. You will see in the coming time, when we show, there won't be a ball in the water, but you will see the water twist, or work or what I call it, whirlpool, in the same position as the ball, rotating and having a heartbeat. Then we show the operation of the soul of the man. We are heading that direction. We had to show it to you in a tangible way, now that you can see it. Humans, they say, I see, I believe it, now we've shown you. The next step is creation of the field. Very much as there is an electron and a proton, there is no tangibility, you cannot pick up an electron. It's impossibility, because it's, it's, it's against, it's a hollow dynamic field. And this is the next step. In the coming days, uh, the research centers will deliver this, because there are two things to achieve this. It comes the knowledge of peace and understanding of yin and yang from the Chinese nation, scientists. It comes from the ethos of Zorashtra, from the Iranian scientists, and the two will match. In balance, to be correct, and do good, and act good. And in that process, the knowledge comes from the soul of the scientist, not from the brain of the physicality. This is how I have set it to be, because it's the only way mankind will live through it. The fundamental work is not to be tangible. Fundamental work is to show that we can show, we can move fields in a collective matter as they want to be there to be part of, not to be encaptured and encapsulated in a ball that we force you to be here. In a way, we free the man from dimension of physicality and understanding field forces of the universe. It is absolutely beautiful if 
you can understand and you can develop such a technology in the coming weeks and months. This is part of what we strive to achieve. This is part of what the structure of mankind as a whole needs to achieve. We don't share knowledge and our thoughts with every man who is not the man of peace. Mr. Keshe, we have a question from Achilles La, who is asking, is it possible uh, to ask Mr. Keshe to explain more about the theory of the plasma computer? How does it work? What's, what's the difference between a plasma computer and a von Neumann computer or a quantum computer? And is there any way for a layman to build such a computer for a proof of concept? What kind of software does a plasma computer run? Uh, runs on the software of the soul of the man, has no physical dimension, and has a soul. Which means the quantum system you have now is just what you put in has no dimension, has no soul. It just has to do something. The new computers have no physical dimension, but works on the need of the man in the knowledge of the bank of the universe. It's a big difference. And as I said, we head towards a new breakthrough in the world of science. We head through in a way that all these IT games we have in the, in the handful of, less than handful of years will become obsolete. Because uh, the scientists um, will come up with it. will develop new understanding of the structure. They, um, the scientists who work in the new plasma computer technology will come in with a soul, will come in with understanding of the soul of the system, not the mechanism of the system. Because in the dimension you will see, in the dimension, we'll observe the vibration of the soul. I want to speak Chinese. Going through the system, I tap through the intermediary of the system that understands the essence of the soul of the Chinese language, not just the Google translation. We don't need to be explained when we speak Chinese just the word, we feel the essence of it. We feel the emotion of the language. We feel the soul, where all that knowledge has come for us to be in that position. It's a change of the game. And for this reason, because we can feel the new system, operation of new system, we will have nothing people will just throw away the computers in the coming months and years. Because they will tap into a new cycle of understanding the fields and the knowledge. We made hard this to hold information. The information is kept in the soul of the knowledge of the universe. 
which we are part of it. It's like being a, what I call, a screen and a keyboard in one office, but the actual mainframe is kept in another building in another city. The whole knowledge is accessible, accessible to all. It's not that we have to buy a computer to access it. I used to laugh at this years ago. When I used to work with British nuclear fuel in England, those days we had no computer as such. England, with all its might, did not have computers who could analyze, which could analyze our data for developing the new nuclear reactors. We, we used to, punch cards, if you know what I'm talking about, some of you just said about it. And then, we used to take these cards in boxes, in sequence, and leave it in the room, secure room, in the tower, in the center of the research center in BNFL. And they used to load it at the daytime, on a standby, that when we were asleep, or when Americans were asleep, we could use their computer because they were faster and we used to pay for it. But the beauty of it was, that's what I said to the head of my, what do you call, BNFL, it was very simple. I said, do you know what, the Americans are so successful and they're very faster than us? He said, no, we are better. I said, because we give our data to them to analyze, they have access to our knowledge plus their knowledge. Because now they gather more. And they were selling this system, and the, what I call the European nuclear scientists never realized why the Americans are going so fast. Because when we uploaded, it wasn't ours anymore. Our knowledge will come theirs, and the scientists work on the back of our knowledge. And they became the center, that's one of the reasons American became so successful rapidly in the nuclear industry. And they thought that the best, because they literally took from all the scientists, we give you a free, you're part of it, NATO, they took everything, Luto. And this time, we don't have this. We all access to it. We all understand it. We all tap into the knowledge. And this is a universal knowledge. And it can be built by anyone, as long as you understand the process. That's why we don't show it in public, because you failed the last test miserably. Knowledge seekers and the rest of the humanity, you failed when we showed you the Magrav system. You did, not us. We gave it freely, you didn't understand it, and you went rampaging with it. And the same, we gave the same to the Keshe Foundation Manufacturing. Everybody came out, they never understood the essence of it. This time, yes, anybody can build. This time, will it be free, given to the man? Not till we secure world peace. Our way, we had the negotiation, we don't give it to the nations like last time, that they see what they can do. Last time we gave the key to show them they don't have the understanding and intellect to be able to develop. Now, we deliver the intellect and the development to develop. Keshe Foundation would lead the structure of the technology. We can build it at home, yes, cost a couple of dollars. But, would you understand it? I don't think so. Monkey see? Monkey does. So, we go in a way that we make the governments to bring education system that everybody understands the need of it, the purpose of it, the ethos of it. 
It won't be just on the Keshe Foundation service for somebody to come and tap and run. You learn the reason why you are doing it. And it's the responsibility of world leaders through the nations to transfer this knowledge and technology. Any other question? Yes, uh, Randy asks in the Q and A. How, how would the average person on the street be aware of this new feeding system once it is online? They won't eat. They feel good, and they just if they eat, it will be out of pleasure. No man will kill anymore for food. I think the question is more, how will people find out about this technology, basically, or how, how will they become aware of it? Um, Part of it we are I... teaching. Part of it we teach. Part of it will come through the skill of our heads of Keshe Foundation and the Universal Council members, how they negotiate and feed, not only the world leaders, but the public. As I said, the heads of the Foundation negotiate with governments to see the beauty of the change. And contentment. One of the ways which Gates managed to sell this injection and what we call vaccination, is that the leaders could control and then they would have been elected one after another. Now, the work of the Universal Council and Head of the Keshe Foundation and all of you is to show the beauty of um, falling in love with the knowledge in a way that the leaders understand that if you are there to lead, you are there to create comfort condition, People will love you for what you created and they keep you to represent their emotion. And this is what is to be. We, we have to now, the next phase, we'll see, we'll emphasize on teaching by the governments and nationals. The head of the Keshe Foundation, Iran, has already started that process in Iran. The teaching to officials, to people who can do something. And the next step is how we develop this knowledge to be shared by all governments, by all uh, citizens. This is a two-track horse. One we teach, and one we have to develop. The development and delivery of the new technology stays with my work. As I said, now you understand why I stepped at the head of the foundation and left it to the two ladies. Because what you see on the screen today, is because I'm back in the lab, back into research. And I can transfer knowledge and develop knowledge with the people who I trust. Where the technology is safe. And this comes step by step forward to reach the stage where, as I develop, the Universal Council and the head of the Foundation will sell the technology on the love of it, not on what marriage they bring financially. This is a big difference. This is why the Corona disease virus is selling to every nation, because every head of nation has been bright. Two ways. Financially in the pocket, and 
that you will be the last leader. Nobody will oppose you because now through the vaccination you control the emotion and the voting. And unfortunately with this technology, even that is obsolete. The soul will know the truth and the physicality will not follow. It's very simple. Uh, Mr. Keshe, we have a question from Jefferson who asks, how will people with disabilities, such as blindness or deafness, be included in this wonderful process of interaction? since they have no chance of learning and positioning themselves on this technology. He says, would it be like flowers? Thank you very much. The man in the space is deaf and dumb through his dimension of his physicality. So, in a way, in the space, we are all blind and deaf. So they actually have an advantage over advantage, uh, you know, regular over people. Us. They've already yep. <laughs> dropped some of the things that get us in trouble. In a way, it's easy for them to access their soul. Well, isn't it true that we hear about people that are blind, for example, that they're actually way more sensitive when someone comes in the room they actually feel them, they know what their emotion is, they know what they're like, because they're, they've been forced to extend that part of themselves to, to sense, to be able to communicate some way, because they are blind, they have lost one of their main ways that we take in information as humans, and what we rely on this, uh, this very, very fragile relationship with the very narrow band of the electromagnetic spectrum that we call the visible light spectrum. And everything we do and think about seems to be uh, orientated on something, uh, the light reflecting off of the matter of this uh, planet. So um, being blind is... Uh, a big advantage is a blessing <laughs> this time <laughs> around. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should but, start a, a special group of the uh, the blind people that can see. You know, the, uh, in a way, in a way, when we come to the dimension of the structure of the soul, we hear and see through the dimension of the soul that. The same as what we see a dream, we become a translation of the time. We don't need eye to see. We can, as you said, the smell and taste without it. We can understand it without it. I used to have a beautiful, gorgeous great grandmother. When I left Iran, she was still alive, but old in her 90s and 100s. And she had that time, 50 odd grandchildren and children and great grandchildren. She married when she was nine, so you can imagine by that age. And in a way, she was blind, but she still could see very close distance. She knew all her siblings, all her children and grandchildren and great grandchildren by smell. We used to try to cheat, we used to put perfume on, and she says, no, this is Mehran, I know the smell. Because she used to come to the house when we were born, and she gave us a lot of love. And we were always puzzled how this old lady knows all of us, every grandchild by smell, every great-grandchildren. I was a grandchild, I was a great-grandchild, and so, we don't need the eye to see, it depends with the blindness of the physicality, what we see through the other dimension of the soul. Then now we get more and more educated by it. 
and right, in a way, we becoming educated to the work of the soul. I can't see in the dimension of physicality, I use the dimension of the soul to see. In the research and development which is going on now, we will bring a new dimensions that you will hear our thoughts, you feel our emotion. And in past few days, in the research center, I've been testing this, to see how, and the way it interacts, the way it triggers sequence of works. And in so many ways, we develop the next step in research and development of the new technologies with our damage. In a coming time, what you saw as a yellow ball, will be floating free in the, in the environment. We know how, we understand it, it's just a matter of bringing control to it, because our guys have already lost the system, they don't know where it is in the lab, it flew away. But, they understood the principle. I only work in the lab, the people I trust. Because this knowledge needs trust of so much. So much strength to be able to share and hold on, that it brings the final position of the peace. In a positive way in a correct way. Negativity in my lab does not exist, because the progressive development has to be positive for humanity. Any other question? Um, Dietmar had asked in the YouTube, is it hemoglobin inside? The ball, of course, that's rotating. No. Okay. This is one of these questions where people will probably start asking. Yeah, they start this? poking, is it is it this? poking is it and poking, yeah. And they all get no, 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 no. <laughs> but no again and no. Go back okay. to understand the essence of what created homoglobin. Homoglobin comes from the interaction of the soul of the man, with the interaction of the soul of the physicality of this planet, and the soul of the whole structure of the universe. Your hemoglobin in a space of zero value, you'll be lost, if we cannot replicate the dimension of the amino acid of the man, because homoglobin is a protein base. Okay, regarding the um, this uh, space of the ball that's um, going around that we looked at in the video, and it's Diane again, and she, she asked before about that um, uh, that uh, rotation around and what's in the center and so on. So she says, it, so it's more like a dance to interacting, going around a shared space? In a way, if you want to think of it. Okay. 
how, how does the two enter into it? We see the ball visually, we see the ball, we don't see another ball on the other side, like two uh, dancers that are dancing. That no, uh, it is, if you, this is the reason why we showed you that yellow ball, to see that is, there is nothing outside it to interact with. There's not another magnet or something or whatever that this interacts with. This is the reason we show the independently standing system. So wouldn't it be more like a single dancer rather than two interacting, going around a, a shared... Is, is, your, is your heart a single dancer, but it beats and works like this? If we release your heart from your chest with all the properties which it has without the engagement of the cage of the lung, what you call it, chest, would your heart stay where it is? The energy which your heart releases on every beat is not throwing blood into your vein, it's spreading energy right across your body what man has never considered. We see the heartbeat as one thing which pushes blood, but have you ever stood still to understand that heart, every beat, is like hammering onto a, uh, what do you call it, onto a pan. The vibration and the noise goes through whole body and transfers energy to every cell. Man is too physical. And if you understand that heartbeat which you create, the noise of it, the energy of it, is given to every cell of the body of the man. That's a synchronizing force for every cell. It's not that you feel it in your way and your doctor holds your hand. You're too physical. The reality is, that energy absorbed from the lung, majority of it is higher strength by the beat of the heart given to all the cells immediately. What blood carries is a leftover information, physical dimension. Scientists have never realized this. They just look at it and that say there's a heartbeat. But what is the functionality of it? What does it do? How come when you have a drum and I hit on it with a hammer, you hold your ear, it says you receive too much energy to give me a headache. And you don't consider that the heart of the man, every beat releases so much energy in the body of the man. If you look at it, you absorb the energy from the environment in the long charge of the blood, and of the higher order, you release it through the heart, through the body. That's why the heart and lung are near each other, it's kept in that way. Release of the energy in a rapid way. But world of science has never understood this. Oh, I have a heartbeat. But what happened to the noise you call a heartbeat? What energies are released? by that beating of the heart across the body of the man. Never been considered because man is too physical. Speaking of noise, Ed says in the Q and A, just to, in a rant thought, he says, "Is there, is there music in the universal environment? In the physical, we have sound and tone. In the universal, is there an equivalent on the field level?" Of course, interaction of the fields creates noise. Of course, it does. If it's too strong, or too uneven, it creates light. When you have a weak structure like Earth, and a strong field like from the Sun, it creates light. You 
Uh, we show in the coming time, I have set a special structure in the lab, that will show at what point the system will interact with different things in the lab. And in the coming time, we will show this. Where we'll see, um, for example, how the system, even if there is a mouse running the lab, or a man running the lab, or a cat comes in the lab, or a child comes in the lab, we see the interaction of the soul with the structure, with a peace-loving system which is put in. We'll see the light, and I explain to the research that I put so much specifically in this position that we'll see which one interacts at what level with what. When you are in the universal community, they're not all from the same destination, they're from hundreds of different destinations. When your soul interacts, <coughs> you know their origin, and you can see them in their original shape or color, or whatever, of their point of origin. It's like, in a physical dimension, he's from China, he's from there, he's from there. Now we see the fields of his strength, and the field of his strength which tells us which part of the universe they come from. Any other question? Um, <clears throat> Jefferson says in the Q&A, or suggests if we put two more spheres like this one in the same environment, what would happen? Would they orbit each other? Thank you. We'll show you next week. <laughs> add a sphere each week and we'll see what happens. In a way, we have created the environment, now we have to see the interaction. This is what was discussed in the lab yesterday. We have to understand it, we have to position it, we are developing new materials, never known before. We are creating systems never known before. When I get to the lab, is my playground. When I've been too long away, but the man wasn't ready now, the man is ready, the time has been set. So, it's time to play, and I enjoy playing in the lab. Because it brings new insight, it brings new, new, new ways to show the beauty of the play. And you will see, gradually, we will not show you the structure, no way, we will not uh, open it up, but till we get agreement from the Chinese leadership and the Iranian leadership, in joint collaboration and development of the new space technology. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. I'm wondering, because you already created a soul, so if we want the soul to manifest as a like, physical body, so what next do we need? What do you uh, mean? I, I remember you last at that time you said you want to show how to create life in a box. So now you already create the soul. So if we create like a creature, let the soul you created to manifest as a creature or being, what's next we still need it? Mm. 
That goes on a wisdom and a wish of the man. How do you want to see this soul in the dimension of physicality? Very simple. Very, very simple. How do you, as a human race, would like to see this soul? Let's put it on the panel. Let's get a, let's, let's ask you a lot, knowledge seekers. How would you like to see this soul, which we have created? That is brought the motion, and understanding, and a heartbeat. How would you like to see it to become a physical dimension? Is that means like, uh, if, uh, we, 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 we see the Creator, somebody see Creator as a Jesus, some see the Creator as a Buddha, some say it was a Bodhisattva or Mohammed. Is that because of the concept or the something inside our, our brain and then it manifests that image to us? So at the essence level, it, it is just the energy. Is that? what you want to say? No? No, uh, you explain. Now you started a discussion, let's talk about it. We created a soul which shows itself in this dimension of rotation. Without any source of physicality, we are feeling it, whatever. And how would you like to see this soul to take physical dimension? Or are you scared to see it manifest itself in a dimension that you might not like to see it? Come on, knowledge seekers, open the book. Well, for me, I would naturally want to try to um, figure out the, the criteria to make it go faster or slower or, or to um, change direction or to, um, to control it in different ways, just different experiments to check the parameters to uh, push the limits of, of what it can do. Can we make it into a wheel that goes around and can create useful, uh, um, you know, uh, designs for humans to use? Or, you know, it, maybe it can be a perfect clock. Maybe it ends up being what about, would you like it blonde or would you like it blue eyes? Would you like it to be, hey, it's a soul, now you can decide. Mm -hmm. Now you have an option. Let's play the game. And see if we can make your dream come true. One thing that came to mind for me was, what if you could make it into a little ball that kids could play with and they would understand the way the universe works from this uh, very simple toy and then they can explain it to their parents and grandparents so that we can uh, um, you know uh, allow them to uh, make the transition into this new technology because the kids will take it in immediately and say, think it's completely normal. Whatever you throw at them, they can uh, adapt to and uh, make it part of their life almost right away. Whereas the older people take a while to kind of have to get some kind of rational explanation or they have to figure it out or they have to 
ignore it for a while before they accept it and, and that kind of thing. So to make it into something that's that's tangible, that people can play with it and actually feel it. What if you put that ball in your hand? Would it tend to make your hand go to that same beat? Or is it even you know safe to put it on your hand to start with? It might be one question. But how can we interact with it on on a uh, on a close level? Plasmas are always safe, so that question doesn't exist, mm -hmm. especially at this level. I guess you, you wanted, wanted to become a mermaid. <laughs> yes, I love mermaids. So, would you like to have a soul of a mermaid? What would be your intention if it's a mermaid? How would you like it? What color scale you like on it, and what color eyes you have to want that mermaid to have? What beauties do you want to see in it? Do you want a female mermaid, or do you want a male mermaid? What's your wishes and see to what extent we can extend this knowledge. I prefer to say it as an angel, has a beautiful wings and... A Different dimension, mixture of what I call West and East culture. Yes. Yes. What we what we strive for uh, to make it all one. The reality is, it's it's a as I just said, um, a flaw in a man's thinking. Uh, the way he has spread this planet, and this has created a lot of new, or uh, what I call. A school of thoughts. Most of the things we decide is our own choice or we've been brought to accept. And for example, would I like what color to be? What creature to be? Can I create a new creature through a soul that represents all the created things on this planet? The bird, the animal, the trees, the stone, the man, the beast. What would this creature will look like that we all accept is abundance of peace and love and what I call completion? Why does he have to be in the shape of a mother I love? Why can't be a collective soul of the human creation on this planet? Why don't we step further that it present the soul of the unicos? that wherever we are, anywhere in the universe, we see it. This is the first child of the man, science. Uh, what would this soul represent for all of us? And all those who we call uh, universal community. To what extent we are prepared to extend our generosity of acceptance. Yes, this is the this, this is, this is why sometimes I put these kind of questions for, for thinking, not just for finding answers. Mm -hmm. uh, we always used to say, why do we call it East? What about if the sun rises on the East Coast of the United States, that US become East? 
why have we chosen a line of ocean to call it the beginning of where the sun rises? Sun rises all the time at all horizons. How do we go to extend of a school of thoughts that when we become men of a space, there is no sun to rise. The man lives through the rising of his soul. We have no day and night in the space. It's one continuous life. Isn't it that's the reason why we need to travel with the dimension of the souls? How much beds and how much quills and how much pillows are we going to carry on the space travels of thousands of years? Or when we land in another dimension, we look for anything to make a pillow out of it or to make a blanket out of it. To kill more animals and destroy more environment. Hmm. This is part of the total teaching. This is part of um, new understanding. This is part of how it's going to be. And with what we showed today, is a new structure, a new way of life. In time, man will understand the what I call the power of small video was shown. Scientists now, we have released the soul of the knowledge around the world, will be enlightened to achieve this. And in matter of weeks, it will be open to number of scientists around the world. And then nations will take over. And how far can we connect and correct this? The, the reality is, we create a lockdown for humanity, closing the factories of arms from now on, lockdown to animosities of the past. Who is paying the wages of these people in these factories when they go lockdown? Governments, we accept it, to cover it. Why can't we bring the new dimension into it? The, the essence of the new cycle is abundance. Yeah. Abundance of everything mankind needs. So, does this ball already carries that soul for all of us? That's why it has no center. That's, does it mean that we enter a new cycle of knowledge, which with it, we create new understanding? Does it mean that in the coming time, mankind will become independent of totality? And, does it mean that those who've been trying to create the wrong environment for the whole mankind will become subordinate to their own misconduct? We'll see. We, my, my wish is very simple. How far this new technology will take shape in man's dimension of understanding. We will not stop developing, we will not stop sharing knowledge, but this time uh, we work selective, that we get the maximum outcome in what we want. We will show to those nations who want to understand the new ways. One of my biggest joy is when I see nobody buys Microsoft. One of my bigger joys is when people do not need injections. When we put the computers into bins. It was something we need, we had to add to, and we move on. The end of world of 
what I call um, computer game, literally with this technology is over because you don't need anything as is within the memory and within the bank of the universe. These are not dreams because I can show you a lot. Through the soul of the man will reach the man. But now we have the means to show the man that we can reach you. Play our game, our way. Any other thoughts? Um, we've got, uh, well, we had another hand up. We've got Jalal up. A system without physical interactive. Now we have shown we can create a system without physical interaction. You see a system running on its own, has a, um, if you look at it, a repetitive understanding and how it wants to place itself. Now, in a way, as I said, this, this picture speaks a thousand words. And that is, now mankind has the capability to see that he can create an object of his own decision and with it has a dimension to decide it's a structure. That ball is your physicality in the dimension of your soul which is not tangible. How would you like it to be? And if I change the condition would your soul allow your physicality to dance this way? Well, Randy says in the q and A, I I will take the rotating ball of peace I saw tonight and share it with the souls of the people with whom I interact with, and they in turn share it as well. And that is how we get real world peace. Ed says, I would like to see it as a living essence of some kind. However, it wishes to manifest itself in our environment. Our soul manifests as a human body. Would this soul need to manifest in the same way? Or could it be a light or gaseous? Or would it manifest on the soul level as a feeling of presence? Elias says, can this be the preview or manifestation of the new soul, which will be coming on March 21st, 2021. That soul is unique and it'll be the change of the course, it'll be the change of the game. In so many ways, it could be the beginning of the structure, but in a way we are showing the physical dimension to his existence. In a way, we have to accept the totality. We have to accept a new dimension. With this, this little simple video, will change the course of humanity in a very, very rapid way. In the coming weeks we'll show more, and in the coming weeks as we, um, we travel with the world governments to bring the new change, um, we'll make them to understand, and there will be 
they will understand very rapidly that what tools they have in their hand is obsolete. And in so many ways, maybe, maybe Corona has been a good thing for humanity, to stand still and think, reassess. And, <coughs> Do we go through the next phase of understanding more through on the growth of the soul of the man? Because we will see it, we understand it, and we will be enlightened by it. A lot of knowledge seekers sit, listen during the teaching or after the teaching, or people listen to it in years to come. And it enlightens them in one way or another to expand the knowledge in the way they see it. But in essence, from now on, the knowledge of the universe is open to every man. It's how we change the mankind and the rest of the universe to become totally one dimensional towards coexistence in a peaceful manner. In all the times man has been on this planet, and all the evidences we have, we have never seen forces of universe fighting each other in the space of this planet, or within this ground. Because they have everything they need. They have achieved point of maturity that they don't need to fight for anything. Then now it's time for the man to mature. It'll be a very interesting time from now on. As in the coming time, we bring you, as we said, the, the emotion of presence, emotion of knowledge, and every other emotion that the man will start understanding more how to become mature. If there are no questions, shall we call it a day before you hit your four hour deadline? Um, perhaps we can just hear from Chow here, uh, who had a question in the Q&A and he's got his hand up as well. And uh, maybe we can end with that. Yep, That's thank okay. you very much. Go ahead. Uh, hello, Ms. Cash. This is Chao from China. Um, I have a question about the, the difference of the uh, ALS and the MS in the aspect of the carbon change. Because in, in your paper, it is said uh, the, the ALS, the uh, the I mean the carbon in the amino acid converts from conductor to insulator on a more permanent basis, and for MS, uh, and uh, you said that uh, ALS is the reverse process carbon crystal structure to MS in neural communication line. So my question is how. What's the difference in between them in the in the carbon change? Yeah, the, it's a, it's the conductivity according to the emotion and the strength of the emotion, and insulation according to that. If you look at the MS and if you look at the LS, ILS, you see. With the MS, there is an uh, inherently works a different operation and a different way of emotion. And conductivity of the carbon does not only apply to the um, what I call the copper side. If it applies to the strength of the zinc side as well, the emotion side, the neurosystem. We see totally two different 
ways of approach in understanding and paralysis. The paralysis of the ILS is very different than the MS. The mindset is totally, and the emotion of the two are very, very different. We block one through the conductivity of physical dimension, we block one and the, um, the strength of the emotions uh, structure. But in the end, both show the same kind of result. In ILS, you wish to die, terminate the contract. And body has to reset itself, because he was said to die at age of 80, now has got to do that 40, because you requested, you put your request in, and he accepted. With MS is, I want attention. I want to be loved. You never put in the, that certificate into your soul. Very different, totally, and body reacts totally different. If you <coughs> seen so many people with ILS and MS, you will understand the huge difference between the approach of death. MS is begging to be loved. ILS is begging to die, to terminate the contract. And even though they might look the same from outside, from inside it's totally different operation. Uh, can, can I ask you, uh, a detailed question, because in the paper you said the MS, in, in MS, the carbon changes from insulator to insulator in a diamond structure and stays throughout the process of the illness. And uh, for, for ALS, um, the, the carbon converts from conductor to insulator. So, so it seems like uh, um, there are some difference between like in about the carbon uh, structure. Yes. Just one second, please. Yes, it's the difference. One, as I said, it changes according to the strength of the emotion. One changes according to the strength of the wish. Need. One works through the, um, what we call, neurosystem wish. One works through the physicality need. I wish to die. I terminate. Because to us, we look at the same thing, but it's not. One is emotion, and one is um, a need. and they have different strengths, and they manifest themselves in different operations of the carbon within the body. Carbon is a link of the carbon. Of the Sorry, a link of the... Sorry, a link of the... Communication between the... It's a link of communication between every part of the man, doesn't matter in the emotion side or in the physical side. That's why we always use carbon in all interactions. But it has different orientation and different strength. Though. It's a... <clears throat> it's a very, very big difference. It's a massive difference between the two. And the uh, orientation of the carbon to become an insulator, orientation of the carbon to behave like an insulator to stop the emotion. Man, the knowledge we have at the moment, we cannot stop emotion. But carbon in certain orientation can even stop the emotion. 
And that's a piece of knowledge which is not been taught. And this is why, in the past teachings, we always refer to the emotion of these things, because man, by choice, has blocked these emotions. And now has the freedom to learn from the soul. And that will come through again, understanding of the strength of the carbon within, the structure of the physicality of the body of the man. This is why, when you look at the structure of the brain, Oh, although it all looks white, but you see it in different shades and shadows. The shade of shadows of the brain, when you cut across it, is the strength of the carbon which is used in conjunction with magnesium and the zinc to orientate and reflect the light through the carbon structure. Because it can change, switch from conductor to resistor, at a very, very low current. And then it comes back, it shows, because in the brain we don't have no muscles. But in the physical side we have muscles, and depends which way the instruction comes. In, in the dimension of MS, I want to be loved, I want to be hugged by the mother. We see majority of the people with MS have a psychosomatic condition in respect to their mother. With ILS, we see psychosomatic in condition to emotion of physicality and need. Why do we see so many sports people nowadays become ILS? Because in a physical dimension, what they wanted, a house, bigger money for their fee is not there. Fame, there were four, is not there, so I want to die, I didn't get what I wanted. In a um, MS, we see the direction I want to be loved by my mother, it's the emotion. So it's a different structure of the carbon interaction. Different strength. Different ball game, totally different ball game. Hey, thank you, Mr. Gish. As you mentioned, we should probably uh, wrap things up here to keep it under four hours for transcriber bunch. Uh, thank you very much for today. I hope we opened a new cycle in knowledge and understanding. I hope we open a new door for humanity to enter the universal community and understanding and the strength of the soul of the man. In so many ways, today, as I said, the Thanksgiving Day, thank God for sharing the knowledge of universe with humanity. And I hope mankind will be wise to this change and evolution. Thank you very much. Okay, well thank you Mr. Keshe once again for another Knowledge Seekers workshop here. To już jest koniec tego wykładu, tak więc jest dosyć późno. Jeśli ktoś chciałby mieć jakieś pytanie lub chciałby coś dodać, coś powiedzieć w sprawie warsztatu lub wcześniejszych spotkań, to zapraszamy.
Tak więc skończymy na dzisiaj. To były 421 warsztaty poszukiwaczy wiedzy w języku polskim z niedzieli 6 grudnia 2020 roku. Serdecznie dziękuję za bycie tu. Spotykamy się w czwartek. Tak więc dzięki za przetłumaczenie. Życzę dobrej nocy i do usłyszenia. Nadszedł czas zmiany, przejścia do prawdziwego działania Wszechświata. I nadszedł czas, aby zrozumieć, że używamy stanu materii, by osiągnąć poziom zrozumienia duszy człowieka. Teraz rozumiesz, być może, dlaczego Kreator wysłał swoich posłańców w imię tego, co miałeś. To oni przynoszą uszy, aby można było ich użyć, gdy nadejdzie czas Mesjasza. Mogę nauczyć duszę i przesłanie. Nie by się przeciwstawiać, ale poprzez ich zrozumienie przez tych, którzy stali się Mesjaszami, aby dawać ze swoich dusz, aby ich elewować. Zadanie stało się łatwe. Szkoła jest tutaj i uczniowie są tutaj w oddaniu. Wtedy nie będzie żadnej walki między tym, co nazywają muzułmanami a chrześcijanami. Baranek i lew będą jeść i spać w tym samym gnieździe. Chrześcijanie i muzułmanie będą spać i modlić się w meczecie, w tym samym kościele, w imię ich dusz, nie w imię religii, które są używane do tworzenia tak wielu konfliktów, dla korzyści tych, którzy byli hiperaktywnymi dziećmi. Nadszedł czas, czas zmian jest tutaj. I jak powiedziałem, moje życzenie jest moim rozkazem. Jeśli pragniesz ujrzeć pokój, droga pokoju jest wyłożona bardzo wyraźnie. To dusza świadomości zbiorowej. Poprzez dawanie stworzy tą pozycję zmiany. Nic innego. W duszy człowieka nie ma długopisu. Jestem pewien, że po wejściu do społeczności uniwersalnej nigdy nie zobaczysz niczego zapisanego, ale równowagę pól w duszy egzystencji. Staraj się być na tyle pokornym, aby nie stać się aroganckim w mocy, którą zrozumiałeś i posiadłeś. Inaczej wpadniesz w tą samą ścieżkę kościoła i meczetu. To jest to, co obiecaliśmy i to właśnie dostarczyliśmy. Musimy zrozumieć działanie duszy. I musimy zrozumieć, że dusza człowieka jest gwiazdą w kosmosie Wszechświata. Jeśli porównamy duszę człowieka i tak wielu nas, 7 miliardów w jednym zbiorze, Ziemia jest jak galaktyka z tak wieloma gwiazdami. Kiedy patrzymy w głąb Wszechświata, widzimy galaktyki z setkami milionów gwiazd. Podobnie jest z planetą Ziemią. Niesie 7 miliardów pięknych gwiazd, które są duszą człowieka. 
niesie z sobą duszę tak wielu trylionów zwierząt, roślin i wszystkiego innego. Jeśli więc patrzą ci, którzy nie widzą fizyczności Ziemi i jej zawartości, co widzą? Widzą galaktykę z wielką ilością pięknych, świecących świateł. Każda według swojej siły. Każda zgodnie ze swoją pozycją. Niemowlę ma piękną duszę, podobnie jak staruszek. Dla tych niefizycznych, którzy nie widzą fizycznego wymiaru tej planety, ale widzą siłę pola, jesteśmy gromadami gwiazd. Ludzka rasa, każda pojedyncza dusza, nic z daleka nie widzi. To jest dusza rybaka, to jest dusza kosmologa, to jest dusza prezydenta. Wszystkie świecą bez względu na fizyczność. To jest magia. O to, co nowa nauka musi przynieść człowiekowi. Kiedy patrzymy przez naszą duszę, widzimy tylko gwiazdy w innych duszach. I to jest przełom. To jest zrozumienie. Na tym właśnie polegają te wszystkie nauki. Dojście do dojrzałości następnego poziomu, aby zrozumieć daleki kosmos. Wszechświat jest ostrygą dla tych dusz, które służą. Wtedy człowiek jest gotowy do wejścia w kosmos. Wtedy człowiek jest gotowy, aby stać się częścią uniwersalnej społeczności, która została obiecana. Nigdy nie obiecywałem wam nieba. Zawsze obiecywałem wam elewację człowieka, aby przyłączył się do rodziny. A teraz macie klucz. To wy musicie otworzyć drzwi, aby zrozumieć, że mogę elewować duszę tych ludzi lub milionów innych dusz, że fizyczne życie na tej planecie zmieni się. Wtedy jestem godny bycia częścią społeczności uniwersalnej, by być, aby służyć, aby się rozwijać, by być tam, aby być częścią, że w cyklu życia wszechświata staje się w byciu częścią, staje się częścią totalności. Kiedy człowiek osiągnie ten punkt, pojawi się nowy wymiar w sile duszy człowieka, który jest poza wyobrażeniem zrozumienia życia fizycznego. To jest brama do otwarcia nowego życia w nowym wymiarze, co jest poza wyobrażeniem tego, co mogliście nazwać nowym początkiem, nowym cyklem, gdzie ten cykl niesie ze sobą źródło stworzenia życia we Wszechświecie i Unikosie. To jest elewacja duszy, aby służyć. Stała się kluczem. Nie trąż życia fizycznego. Czas jest odpowiedni, nadszedł czas, aby człowiek przeszedł przez ten proces. 